Here's goes the uh, pacer with the landing gear. Check it out. See that? Does that look familiar? What'd you kids think of that? That was really fun. Oh, it was real fun. Good. <laughs> you won't forget that anytime soon. I see, yeah, it's going now. It's going now? Yeah, it's going now. <laughs> Fire the cameraman. No, what did I say? <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. Grassroots Aviation. Yeah, that's right. Seek top secret location. We're here at a top secret location in the Central Valley of California for a genuine grassroots tail dragger fly-in on a genuine grass airstrip here. About over 50 aircraft showed up, invitation only. Grassroots aviation is alive and well here in California. Let me take, take you a little tour around and show you some of these neat and unusual aircraft that showed up here today. We came down with James in the air coop. He tagged along today. There's that amazing wind sock uh, Cessna 170 right over there that the kids play on. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Failed out. Uh -oh. <laughs> Can you ride this inside of here? Can you sit in these seats? Yeah. Do those controls move? Yeah. Wow. And how do you spin this around? By pushing on the ladder? Yeah. Okay. Or you can just push it around by when you're up here. Or the wind pushes it around yeah. too, huh? Yeah, the wind also pushes it around. Oh, wow. They've got a great camping area for camping out overnight right back here. There's a BC-12 Taylor craft and the aircraft, the airstrips over behind here and the aircraft stretch all the way around from behind the hangar here to the front of the airstrip. So what's that? Looks like an RV-8, an Aronka Champ, Cessna 182, another Champ. Uh, is that a Bearhawk, the blue one right there? Yeah. What else have we got? An RV, another RV-8. Uh, Taylor craft, the... I think you call it the F-100 model with the big engine, the O-200, a late model Taylor Craft, another Taylor Craft, and that's what this fly-in started out as originally was a Taylor Craft fly-in. And now the owners just do this once a year and open it up to all their friends. Is that a Cessna 180 or is that a converted something else? I believe that's a Cessna 180. There's the Husky. Hang on, we gotta go look at something inside this hangar over here. Here comes a bite plane. This is a Slepchev Storch uh, designed out of Australia, a mm, maybe three quarter scale or so uh, version of the original Fiesler Storch with a Rotax powered engine. Interesting story the owner picked this up in Fallon, Nevada from the airport authority there as the previous owner had passed away and and quit paying on the airplane. So he picked it up very reasonable and finished it out to this beautiful condition that you see today. Slepchev Storch. <laughs> Rotax power. So next to the Husky, we got a Legend Cub, a Carbon Cub over there, one seventy, couple of one seventy twos, an RV seven, I think it is, a Blenka, a late model Carbon Cub, the FX, a one seventy, and look at this. This is apparently Atlee Dodge's first convert converted J three Cub. So the owner says this is the world's heaviest J three Cub, but this is the one that Atlee Dodge did a lot of his preliminary work setting up the bush modifications needed for these cubs and turning them into super cubs. I mean of course Piper came out with a super cub design but this started out light as a 65 horse J3 now it's got the 90 horse Continental the gear the bracing overhead the beefing up of the tail structure and a lot of different things to make this J3 Cub a Super Cub without flaps. 
Now here's a pretty original Super Cub PA18. So I don't know what came first, Atlee Dodge with all his conversions to the J3 Cub, or Piper finally getting around to designing and building the ultimate bush plane, the PA18 Super Cub. So larger tail, flaps, wings, bigger, heavier structure, and usually a 150 horsepower engine. Fixed pitch propeller. Good in that? Yep. It's a brand new Carbon Cub FX3, man. Georgetown. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Yeah, you're the guy that does the GoPro mounts, right? That's right. Camera yeah, mounts. yeah, camera mounts. Look at that. It's beautiful. Thanks for coming down, man. Oh, good to see you, Juan. We got to come do a tour of your yeah, shop in Georgetown. That. Yeah. That. That'd be fun. Because yeah. he's able to afford airplanes like this with Hollywood GoPro and professional camera mounts for air-to-air -air photography, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. You wouldn't believe the mounts he's got built up. <laughs> now there's a proper grass strip airplane. A Luscom. Is that an 8A? Which one is that? Where's your Luscom? Yeah, where's mine? I should have brought it. It would have been more appropriate for here. Yeah, now that I've seen this place for the first time with the Husky, I'll bring the Luscom next time. Plenty of room. Now this is a rare bird. This started out life as a Republic CB, but now it's known as a Twin B with twin 180 horse Lycoming engines. Is that what it's got on it now? <laughs> I think so, yeah. So it, the CB, of course, an amphibious uh, aircraft, started out life with a big uh, six cylinder Franklin noisy pusher engine in it. And then just a handful of these still survive today that are converted to the Twin B with the Lycoming engines. And as it flew in here, I noticed, the first thing I noticed is sure is a lot quieter than the old CB model. Come in and out through there. The overhead controls. Retractable gear, of course, what makes it amphibious. Where the fuselage is the hull. Bring your life jackets. Very well done. Get this zoom correctly. There we go. Now we can see what's going on. <laughs> Here's the owner of the Twin B. You say you know of just two of them flying today? Yeah. Yep. And I trained one of the guys. He's up in Seattle. The other one's back on the East Coast. Those are the uh, 180 horse light coming engines? Yes. Carbureted? No. Uh, Injected. Okay, IO360. IO so 200 right. apiece. Nope. 180s are parallel valves. Oh, gotcha. 180 injected. Do you got uh, feathering props on those? Yes. Okay, good. And then the when they when they did the conversion, they got their own type certificate? That's correct. It's no longer a Republic CB. Really? STC. It's its own new type certificate called a Stoll UC1. We huh. call it a Twin B now. Wow. We made 23 of them. Wow. That's a rare machine. Yeah. And it looks like you're still operating off of water. That's right. I just do training up in the hills. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, thanks for bringing it out. Sure. Super rare Twin B. On this Indy airfield, we got a whole bunch of other airplanes to look at. So the Champ, another new Carbon Cub, two new Carbon Cubs showed up there. The big uh, Denali Scout, another Blanca. Is that a Husky? Super Cub. Ah, Super Cub. Pacer. Super Cub, 170s, 180s, some Cessnas. But let's check out this Travel Air. Here's a, here's a pretty authentic uh, original Super Cub right here. My plane on final, it looks like a travel air from here. Beautiful.
Look at that. Rare rides. Wow. Old Blue Coastal Air Tours, Travel Air. Nineteen twenty six model four thousand travel air with the right engine. The original looking gauges in there. I think it's a seven eighty. We'll go look at the numbers on the uh, right world wind. Nineteen twenty six. So of course fabric covered, uh, steel tube fuselage, wood wood wing structure. She's been giving rides for a while. <laughs> Got a few patches on there. The travel, uh, yeah, here's the uh, aileron. Travelers are just have these distinctive what they called elephant ears on the ailerons, which gives them that aerodynamic balancing of the control surface. Same thing on the rudder, but they don't have it on the elevator. These old Firestone wheels, tires, wheels. They got for brakes there. Looks like they've upgraded to some form of hydraulic brake. Bungee landing gear shock absorbers. Oh, there goes the uh, pacer with the landing gear. Did you see that landing gear on the pacer? It's the four, it's the bogey style landing gear. Before they invented tundra wheels, they started with two sets of wheels on the landing gear to try to get a lighter footprint so you can go in muddier conditions. Apparently, that's the patent, <laughs> the Boeing aircraft has to go through that patent to build their landing gear today, the double bogey landing gear. So the right 780, 780, is that what that is? Is this the right 780? I think that's what it says right there. The ground adjustable prop and the collector, forward collector ring on the exhaust. Check out the... Uh, lack of shielding on the ignition system don't need no radio they weren't even invented yet <laughs> flying wires and landing wires and the arrow to keep them all straight and from flapping around North by Northwest. Yes, we're going. We're recording? Yep. All right, now here's an airplane that's near and dear to my heart a home built experimental aircraft known as a peat and pole air camper. You can build these aircraft really inexpensively in your garage. They're all wood construction. Typically, well, originally they had a Model A engine in them, and now they've been modernized with the uh, A65 Continental engine. From the 1940s? Well, the design, I think, came out in the, yeah, the, the right. design, I think, came out the in modern, the 30s. Yeah. And this one still has the spoke wheels, so let me show you around here. This is this one is cool. It's like an SE5 It kind of looks like an SE5 pa paint scheme, huh? Which is very clever. So I think it was Bernie Pete and Pole came up with the design. And the one that I had was known as a Grega N1 with the 65 horse Continental. 
So you... <laughs> was you, this one of the first Holy Bullets? Well? Yeah, yeah, very early experimental aircraft, very super affordable air, aircraft to build in your garage. Now this one, wait a minute, this one's different. This does not have the wood, the wood structure of a typical peat and pole. Well, I hope I got the right aircraft, but yeah, that's the uh, under cambered um, airfoil. So the original spoke wheels with the covered hubcaps, the latest in suspension, and check out the uh, the wheel brakes, the latest in braking technology, bicycle stuff. Made it really affordable. A65 Continental. It really flies and handles like an antique airplane. It's it's got a ton of adverse yaw, and as I remembered in mine, that you'd start the bank and nothing would happen. Then all of a sudden, it would <laughs> turn or it would bank significantly. Pete and Pole Air Camper. Check out all the struts and wires holding the tail together. So I probably flew mine for about a hundred hours or so. <laughs> okay, I found the owner of the peat and pole. The one thing I noticed was um, this is not a wood fuselage on this no, one. This one's got a chromoly fuselage and a chromoly tail section. Oh, okay. Really kind of nice. And this this part of the airplane's a little different too. Um, maybe a little more rollover protection if you if you. Uh, uh -huh. It doesn't have brakes, so I don't have to really worry too much about flipping it over. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw your ladies and brakes. Oh, this is cool. Man, mine was impossible to get into without having a little door like that yeah, in the front. I, I see why they're. I see why guys like. You'd like the, to cut uh, them out. Yeah, it's kind of a. It's a. It's a real trick to get in and out of the back of this thing. Yeah. And where do you keep this one? Uh, Woodlake, California. All right. Well, thanks for bringing her down. I own it with his name's Isaac Warner, and we're both Luscombe guys too. So, Good. Yeah. See, you got to be a special kind of nut to. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we're, we're a little nutty. I guess. <laughs> Enjoy something like a peat and pole. Two-hour uh, flight, get home. It's gonna be. It's not very far, but it's gonna take a while. Yeah. Beat in the open cockpit. some performance.